This demo is going to be so fun. We're going to do multiple projects. We're going to start out with this courthouse step variation. I started with a centerpiece, but you can use fabric. Any fabric would do. I have a 1981 cruel embroidery piece that I bought at a thrift store. It had been framed, so it's very clean and very nice. I'm using my bright green scraps and orange scraps. Again, you can use this to make anything you want. You can do a wall hanging. You could put cross stitch inside, or you can just do regular fabric. I'm choosing three different oranges and three different greens. I like to go lighter to darker. You don't need a whole lot of fabric to do this. Because I'm using stitchery for the center of this block, I'm cutting it half an inch away from the cruel embroidery. If it were cross stitch, I would do it with cross stitch. If it were just a piece of fabric, I would make it whatever size I desired. So don't ask me which size to make it. It's whatever size you choose to go with the scraps you're using. Here's my first step. I've decided to do one and a half inch strips for my first step. I'm going to sew the orange on the top and the bottom. And this is directional because it's a bouquet. I measured how wide it was. However wide it is, that's how wide you make your strips so that they'll perfectly match. And then you sew them on. And that is your very first step. I chose to put the orange on the top and the bottom because it's the strongest color. Because this piece is going to be a wall hanging and it's just a look I prefer. So I put my strongest color in the direction of top and bottom if it's directional. Here's the first step of the green. So it also is one and a half inches wide because that's how wide I'm choosing to make my courthouse step. And again, I'm measuring, oh, that big. Okay, I'm gonna cut them that big. And when it gets too big, you'll see what I do. But I cut it, get it ready, and I'm just gonna sew that courthouse step on. In the first round, there are two colors for the first step. And in a regular pattern, you would just cut the next one to be one and a half and you'd keep it the same size. But because this is a variation, I'm going to have my steps get larger and larger as we go towards the outside. I could just add half an inch. I'm going to add a whole inch. So because my first one was one and a half, I'm making this one two and a half. It would also be an option to just have it two inches wide. So you just play with this and decide which look you want. You sew it on. This is so quick and so fast and such a great way to frame. Maybe you have an old cross stitch that you want framed or that you want to give away. This one is actually going to be a wedding gift and I had my daughter choose it. The truth is I collect these from thrift stores because I can't stand that they're wasted. So if they're in great condition and beautiful, I just buy them. I have a whole bunch of them. I've sold them at vendor booths. I've had so much fun with these over the years and they make great wall hangings, they make great table toppers, they make great everything. So here we are sewing our second round, pressing it. You can see that it's absolutely going to be beautiful. Because I'm going up by one inch every time that I'm cutting this last round at three and a half inches, so it's extra wide. You could just make yours half an inch incrementally added to, just depends on the look you want. But mine's going to be a framed wall hanging to go on a wall. You notice that I'm no longer measuring. I'm simply laying it across the top of the strip, the three and a half inch strip, and making it exactly as wide as the piece. It's one of my tricks to not have to measure. You sew it on, you press it, and you get ready. I will do the same for the green because it's just extra wide and I just don't want to fiddle around with it. If you sew accurately, then your piece will be square. Mine was very square, so it just depends on your skill level. If you're worried, then go ahead and measure and get an exact measure. But for me, this is close enough and it works really well. As we watch me do the last step of green, let me tell you that I have made so many of these over the years. They make great gifts. They are wonderful to work in all different colors. I have a gorgeous Santa Claus cross stitch that I did this with in blues and I put it up every year. It's just absolutely beautiful. So this is a great way to frame anything, truly. Or you really can just use regular fabric. If you don't have a cruel embroidery or a cross stitch to frame, just use fabric if you want to try this pattern. You can have it grow as much as you want. I love this look. Before I show you our next project, let's look at the quilting. I quilt really tight around the cruel embroidery. I use thin thread and then I quilt 
an outline around like where the flowers are and it puffs up the other part. It is beautiful. You really can't see the thread. And on the back I'm showing you, you can see that you just go around whatever you want to go around, outlining it the best you can. I have a long arm, but you could do it on a domestic machine and the rest just kind of puffs up and gives it dimension. For our next project, we're going to take some more rescued cross stitches. I found these either in a thrift store or a garage sale, I don't remember, but they were made for a child's room and I cut them down to five inch squares so that they could go with this darling charm pack that I bought years and years ago. So we're just going to fit them in with the squares and lay them out and make them a baby quilt. After carefully laying the charm pack pieces out on my design floor, I've set the cross stitches in and I've put them in a balanced way, quilted it, bound it, and here we go. So darling and it goes so well with these little bears to fit in it also looks like i put extra work into this baby quilt because nobody is ever going to ask who did the cross stitches they're just going to assume i did it so i won't tell either way unless they ask then i'll tell them and i've shown you how to quilt this before you just quilt right over the top with thin thread and make them as cute as you want on the other blocks i did line dancing so there's a lot of motion in this quilt and it's a really cute one i thought maybe you'd get a kick out of seeing my collection of cross stitch so before I show you the last couple of projects I'm just giving you a demo look at this gorgeous stuff I have collected over the years from thrift stores and garage sales and this isn't even a drop in the bucket of what I've owned before I've sold so many because I used to teach classes that were rescue a cross stitch save their lives and then I would demo and show how many amazing things you could do with these and so I'm going to show you mug rugs and I'm going to show you another beautiful wall hanging these are so fun to put in the center of quilts and I I did just make a video showing how to make a medallion quilt center with these cross stitches. If you want to look back, it's actually out of this beautiful one right here and you can see it you can see me make it and so if you have cross stitches that are family heirlooms or whatever and you've just been saving them I say get them out and enjoy them there is so much work put into these I used to cross stitch in my life I don't anymore here are a couple teeny tiny little cross stitches made into mug rugs with little scraps one is bound and one I haven't bound yet but they make great gifts for co-workers or just to put around to put your soda on here I like to drink soda out of a beautiful glass mug rugs they're the best this one was an Amish cross stitch and it was so gorgeous you can take as much time and effort as you want to dress these babies up this is a piece I did to play a game with a bunch of my quilter friends and you can see that I did beautiful applique around it I quilted really tiny in this little Amish village and then I put the applique this is one of my favorite pieces to hang on my wall in the fall stitchery scraps and quilting. They're all so much fun together. Stay merry and creative.